it has been changed a little bit. Just look at it. Oh, it, it just makes you feel like you're James Dean. I can't believe this is happening. What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today we are here with this, the Cyan P1800. And this is honestly one of the coolest cars that has been released this year. When I saw the pictures of this car a few months ago, I was absolutely in love with the way this thing looks. And then we got a message from the guys at Cyan Racing asking us if we wanted to drive it. Well. I was seriously excited to be driving this car because I think it is, just look at it. Look at how cool this car is. All kinds of cool. So today I'm going to show you around it, show you all the cool stuff on it, and then we'll take it for a drive on a beautiful road. And we might be able to squeeze in a little bit of Autobahn later on as well. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to receive updates when we upload a new video. And check us out on Instagram if you like at Autotop NL. Alrighty, so what is what is it? Let's start with that. It is a resto model, of course. Uh, it is a 1964 Volvo P1800, a beautiful car to begin with, but of course, very, very old. It has been restored and modified. So it has been brought back to its former glory uh, with some modern additions to that. But the concept of a resto mod is so diverse. I mean, uh, you can fit new brakes and wheels on it and basically you have a resto mod. But this has gone so much deeper than that because Cyan Racing is actually formerly known as Polestar Racing. You might know them from racing Volvos. And well, Volvo bought Polestar, uh, so this company couldn't use the name anymore and they changed it to Cyan, which is blue, this color blue. And they were world touring car champions with the Volvo S60 TC1. And that is the engine, or this engine is based on that engine, the two liter four cylinder. But also because this is a racing team, we have racing brakes, AP racing brakes. We have independent suspension all around. Uh, we have no ABS, no traction control, no brake booster, a roll cage. It is basically, a racing car resto mold for the street. So it's not about lap times, but it is about driving pleasure. So let's take a lap around it and I'll show you some cool stuff on this car uh, as we usually do. We'll start with the wheels. Now, these wheels are made by Cyan Racing. They look freaking awesome. Uh, I love the Swedish on there as well with central locking wheel nuts as well. And I think this wheel on this car, I don't know how they did it. it. It just fits perfectly. It's like a little bit of a hot rod feel. Really, really nice with, as I said, AP Racing brakes behind that, uh, which are super, super nice. Pirelli P0s, these are 18 inch wheels. And well, let's talk a little bit about the P1800 because it has been changed a little bit. So it looks like a P1800 if you would look at it quickly. But once you go a little bit deeper, you can see that there are some differences. Like the wheels have been placed further to the corner. So the front wheels are a little bit more forward and the rear wheels a little bit more to the rear compared to a P1800. And that does change the look of the car because the cabin is a little bit more to the rear because of that. Um, this is all, by the way, carbon fiber. All these panels are carbon fiber. Uh, so this car is super light. It weighs 990 kilos, which is crazy. Love this. This is so beautiful. Cool antique mirrors or antique style mirrors. Uh, this is one of the few parts that's standard. So this came from a real Volvo P1800 from this car. But man, man, man. Just look at it. It makes me really, really want one. We've got this central fuel filler cap as well, which is super awesome. And we can actually open this. You can see that there it is, the tank. But with that hole in there, it just makes it so much cooler. So at the rear, we've got 
double wishbones, as I said. So we've got fully independent suspension. Uh, this car used to have a live rear axle, but this is a way you can see that this is built by a racing team because it has fully adjustable dampers front and rear, camber, the toe, everything is adjustable. And at the rear, we've got a limited slip differential by Wavetrack and a Hollinger case with a Hollinger five-speed gearbox. Now the gearbox and stuff, we'll talk about that a little bit later on because they have made it to feel like a classic gearbox, like a stock gearbox, but you know, improved by a lot. Let's take a look at the engine. We've got this rod right here, yeah, which we have to push down. And then we can open it and check that out. That is the two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine based on the S60 TC1 racing engine. Uh, the turbochargers down there, as you can see, they tried to hide it because they thought that this looked more classic, which I do agree with, but this is one of the coolest engine bays I've ever seen. It is so clean. You've got that beautiful blue everywhere. Lovely exhaust manifold. Man, this, it, it just looks unreal. It's so clean. Uh, it develops 420 horsepower, 455 newton meters of torque, which is quite a lot considering uh, this car only weighs 990 kilos and uh, doesn't have any traction control or ABS and stuff like that. But it is a piece of art, this engine. Uh, they have been able to run this engine uh, in you know, this basic spec. So this engine, one turbo, up to 528 horsepower. So who knows, maybe they'll, <laughs> they will come with something crazy in the future because there is still some potential in this engine. Now, one of the coolest things about this car and uh, something that's also stock, so this is from the old car, is that to close the bonnet, you just lay it down and then you pull on that rod again in here. So it's this one. And then when I pull it, you can see that it closes, which is super satisfying to do. And it feel, it, it's almost like a soft close, but it's a manual soft close. It's really, really insane. And of course the interior has been reworked as well. You can see the beautiful Cyan Racing bucket seats, a full cage wrapped in leather, really beautiful. A five point harness by Momo looks really cool. And this sort of wool in there makes it really retro cool. And it, it does really fit the car. It, it just makes sense. Uh, we've got it on the doors as well. All that leather, that wool, really beautiful. Beautiful switch gear as well. All right, so let's get in. And up. the seating position in here is actually super nice for me. As a taller person, it is quite incredible how they've been able to package this because you sit nice and low. Uh, as I said, we've got that gorgeous five-speed gearbox. It's a dog leg, as you can see. So one is down and to the left. Then two is up and it's really chunky and old school. Super nice. All the dials are really nice as well. We've got all the writings on there in Swedish, which is just a great detail. And well, we'll start it up. We've got a custom made exhaust as well. Now they told us that it's not made to be super loud. because they didn't want that like turbo, that low sound through the exhaust. They wanted something that sounds a bit like it came from the 60s. So really like that. And we'll get this sorted. You can see the steering wheel, Momo Prototipo, nice and classic. And uh, we'll get going and talk a bit more about what it's like to drive a car like this because Spoiler alert, I'm already super in love with this thing. A uh, handbrake down here is also from the old car. So that's another classic detail. 
Alrighty. Here we go. So we have cold tires now. We have to warm those up a little bit. As I said, no traction control, no ABS. We have to be a little bit careful. Oh, listen to that sound. Oh. So we've got a really nice engine sound combined with a nice exhaust sound and a turbo whistle and a flutter which is just great oh those brakes you really have to get used to the fact that they're ne not boosted so you have to give it quite a bit of pressure but that is really really nice because it just gives you so much feel are positioned quite nicely for heel and toe but I have to drive it a little bit longer I think to be able to do that consistently oh man the power is absolutely perfect you don't want it too powerful with this weight but it is powerful enough that it will give you oh, a nice shove in the back. Oh, this. Oh, this is so nice to drive. All those sounds you hear, it, it just makes you feel like you're James Dean. What a joy to drive this, absolute, it's, it's not only is it an achingly beautiful car, but it drives the way you expect it, like all the sounds and all the feelings you get when you drive this is, it just works, it's spot on. Uh, yeah, we have to go right. love that indicator as well it's so heavy oh my god happening oh. the sun is coming out as well oh. oh heel and toe a little bit my ankle is a bit stiff I don't know this car it has been set up so perfectly the suspension is pretty comfortable still it is quite soft 
and I mean we've talked about this before that's because the car is so light and so stiff rigid the suspension can be softer uh, it's the same story with uh, the Alpine A110 and it just works so well in these cars it just makes the driving experience so so alive so visceral the fact that it it will do 7700 rpm Seventy seven hundred RPM, that's the red line for turbocharged four-cylinder engine. That is seriously impressive. And they've programmed it, the mapping of the engine, so that it will deliver its power in a linear way so you don't have that shove of turbo torque and then nothing anymore it, it doesn't plateau that much I am a little bit sad as well because of the price I really really one of these but they are quite expensive um, around five hundred thousand dollars which is really yeah that's a lot of money I'm not saying I don't understand it because if you look at the work that has gone into this car about you know building it uh, it is basically built from the ground up I can see that there is you know a lot of work in this car and it's it's ridiculous the amount uh, of work and the attention to detail that has gone into this car so I do get it but it is really really expensive unfortunately all of a sudden oh Jesus <laughs> man that 7700 rpm is something and it doesn't oh squeaky brakes it doesn't sound like it doesn't like it of the suspension is perfect it has a 53 47 rear to front weight distribution I mean the way they have approached the the resto mod the guys at Cyan Racing is so cool because you have that racing heritage the setup is so perfect but you also have that that super cool shell that sits around it Oh, those pops in the exhaust are super cool.
All right, here we are at the autobahn. I'm going to turn off the fan. It is really freezing out there, so I am very dedicated. And we've got the draggy here. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to mount the speedo cam, so you have to look at the draggy. Um, by the way, we have a draggy sale for December on our web shop. You can click in the top right corner for 134 instead of 149 euros which is this GPS performance meter. Okay, here we go, at the Autobahn. Third gear. Now, I'm going to turn around here. We have agreed to not go over 200 kilometers an hour, so we're just going to do a couple of runs, a couple of 100 to 200 measurements. And uh, we'll see how quick it actually is. Oh, we even have electric windows, so we can check out the sound. Very cool. that they are working on the power steering calibration still and you can feel that just off center there's it's it's a little bit weird but once you turn in it feels really really good all righty so third gear here we go difficult to compare it to something too I mean yes you have like Singer which is basically the resto mod daddy of them all uh, but you have a lot more companies like that but most of them focus on I would say air-cooled Porsches right this is so different and this is so cool it, it really makes you it really makes you want Volvo to do something with the P1800 because it is such a beautiful car and it really deserves something like this. Now Cyan are going to build, they hope, around 10 a year, which I thought was quite a lot. So I'm really happy about that. And they do have some orders already, which I'm super happy about. Uh, so they are going to be super, super rare, of course. And this is the only one right now. The way that this thing picks up is so brutal. Oh, so good. So freaking good. Man, guys at Cyan, you know how to set up a car. All right, here we go again. Quicker. 
1.32 is the quickest I've been able to do. We'll try one more time here. That is seriously impressive. That is around the same time as a new Aston Martin V8 Vantage or a Porsche Panamera Turbo S. So it is super, super quick. And well, it is just one of the coolest cars I've ever driven. I mean, the cool factor of this thing combined with the racing inspired underpinnings and engine just makes for an incredible package. So guys at Cyan Racing, thank you so much for taking this car to us and letting us drive it. I have enjoyed it very much. Uh, to you guys, hope to see you at the next one. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right there. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one, bye.